Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. So today I wanted to continue a three-part series looking at the challenges that are in the Expedition League. Uh, and this is my part of picks of the ones that you'll need to do if your goal is to get 24 challenges in the League. So the first video in this series covered the 15 challenges that I feel are the easiest, and that's mostly the pathway to level 90, uh, plus doing the Eternal Labyrinth, plus doing a few other things you do on the way, plus going a little bit out of your way to do a few silly things like killing certain unique monsters during the campaign storyline and the like. Uh, in order to get to 24 challenges, you're probably going to need to defeat Cirrus. Uh, you're probably going to need to do about 400 maps and a couple of hundred of the expedition encounters. You also need to do a couple of silly little random things along the way. So, a uh, list of challenges that we've already covered in Path to 12. Uh, I'll just show this quickly here. Uh, and so that's the first two pages. Also, the, uh, this presentation that you're seeing here will be available to download from my blog, sergog.com. So, Divination Cards is the first one that I put in here that is in the Path to 24, but not in the Path to 12. Uh, this is something that can be trivialised by trading, but this is also quite self-farmable. The thing is that some of the things you're asked to farm here, there's a couple of Divination Cards that are pretty tricky to self-farm, uh, and then there's some that are very easy to self-farm, uh, and they both would work for the same, for the same thing. So firstly, for Essences, you want to farm the Divination card Three Voices. This is a common drop in all maps that have three bosses in them. Uh, so City Square is one. Uh, Vile Temple is one. You probably don't want to farm it there. Uh, there's a bunch of, of, of options to do it in, and this will be the easiest of the lot. Uh, for Prophecy, the Ackles Prophecy Divination card is an uncommon drop from Stack Decks. However, it's common enough that with the amount of Stack Decks that you get through both Heist and through the uh, Expedition content, You'll probably sell farmer set just from that way. There's other options as well. Uh, Sambodi's Wisdom drops from the Dunes boss that looks like Hillock. Uh, and also there's the Divination card set for a Five Link Prophecy and the Divination set uh, card set Ancient Doom for a Doom Fletcher's Prism upgrade. A level 21 gem, there's a lot of options here, but only one of them is remotely self farmable, and that is the Bones, which drops from Mina Anima, who is a rogue exile that comes up a lot in the Delve Mines. Basically, if you go out of your way looking for weapon nodes in the Delve Mines, you will often come to a fight that has six rogue exiles. One of them will be Mina um, Amina. Make sure that this Divination card is showing on your filter because it's very cheap in trade leagues, uh, and this will be the way to get this one. For a Scarab, uh, you want to do a few betrayal encounters with Chimera involved. Uh, so basically just uh, forge a few connections between Chimera and other people. Uh, this can mean that they trust each other. This can mean they actively distrust each other and then Chimera will appear in more of your maps as a result of that, and then you'll just get to encounter him a few times. He'll drop the Divination card, Chimera's cut. It's a set of two. You might also get one or even both of them from Stack Decks. Uh, for a six link, there are lots of cards that give six links, and they are all common drops from Heist Armor Chess. I suggest here that you go to the Heist Armor Chess rather than going to the actual locations that these Divination cards drop, uh, although you can certainly get them from a lot of maps as well. And for a unique jewel, there is Garish Power, which drops from maps with Overgrown in the name. Uh, additionally, you can also get this Divination card from Heist Jewelry Chests a lot. Uh, Heist in general is just phenomenal when it comes to Divination cards. So next challenge is Defeat Conquerors. So this requires you to do two things. Firstly, you need to defeat Cirrus, the Awakener of Worlds. And secondly, you need to defeat all of the lesser Conquerors while they are in a region with at least 80% item quantity. So to get 80% item quantity, that is usually a case of chiseling the map, then elking it, and then if it's a terrible roll, either scour elking it or chaos sorbing it. Uh, remember that you can do this while Zana is presenting you the option to go into the Conqueror map. The easiest way to do this challenge, uh, and this is not going to be an option for some of you because you may have already progressed past this point, the very easiest way to do this part is to do it when you're doing your 0, 1, or 2, or 3 Watchstone Conquerors, uh, because the Conquerors at or watchstones become quite a bit harder. That said, Cirrus is probably the hardest part of this anyway. So, uh, you know, if you can beat, if you can't beat, eight, say, an 80% Baran, you probably can't beat Cirrus. Uh, so you're going to need to do all of these things. Uh, in order to beat Cirrus, you can remove all of your watchstones to, have to fight Cirrus in practice mode. So what you'll do here is before you open the Eye of the Storm, so before you talk to Zana and commit the Eye of the Storm to open, I remove all Watchstones from your Atlas. You'll then be at Awakening level zero, uh, and when you fight Cirrus, he'll be quite a lot easier. Uh, the reason that this makes a big difference is that Cirrus's Die Beam 
usually is super, super lethal because it inflicts shock as well. Uh, it can often inflict shock early on, uh, as well as corrupting blood. What you're going to want then, in order to make this as easy as possible, is to have a cast when damage taken set up that links to some sort of guard. Uh, depending on your character, this can be cast when damage taken arcane cloak, uh, which is not something that would normally be used on a build, but will work for uh, for learning Cirrus. Uh, or if you're not mana based, then cast when damage taken linked to either steel skin or molten shell. Uh, what you then want to do is have a flask set up where you have two utility flasks. One needs to remove shock, one needs to remove corrupting blood. Uh, and then you'll want to have these set to be triggered by the... Uh, you want to have these set to be triggered by when you use a guard skill. This will give you a maximum chance of surviving if you fail a die beam in the Cirrus encounter. Uh, but even then, you will still sometimes... Uh, you will still sometimes die to failing the die beam, uh, but it will give you maximum chance to survive the fight. Additionally, outright shock immunity and outright corrupting blood immunity will be even better solutions uh, because most of the time when you die to the die beam, uh, it's not that you get hit by all of the pieces of it uh, and die, you know, to taking 4,000 damage plus 4,000 plus 4,000. It's normally that you get hit by two of them uh, and the first one inflicts a shock and then that's enough to take you over, uh, over the line and, and kill you. So that's good, Cirrus. Uh, if you want tips on fighting Cirrus, the single best guide that I can suggest is by Twitch streamer Don the Crown. Uh, he put together a guide called Never Brick a Cirrus Again, uh, and it's available on YouTube, and I just really recommend it as something that you can learn a lot about the fight from someone that does it on hardcore. So next up is Expedition Encounters 3. This is a really grindy encounter. Uh, this requires perhaps 200 map Expedition Encounters and running all the logbooks you find during them. Uh, and so I think a lot of people might skip this one. I'm covering 28 challenges in this for a reason. It means you can skip four of them. Uh, and I think a lot of you will choose to skip this one. That said, the detonation chain parts of this are trivial. The messy parts are the 3,000 runic monsters and 2,000 chess. Uh, if you're running this solo, then 2,000 chess will be easier than 3,000 runic monsters. If you're running this grouped, then 3,000 runic monsters will be easier than 2,000 chess. Now, in trade... One thing you can do is work together with other players who are working on the end game grinds challenge to do level 80 plus logbooks. So if you've got level 80 plus logbooks, uh, you may be able to form a rotation with players that are looking to do the to get as many level 80 plus uh, uh, as many level 80 plus logbooks done as possible for that challenge that requires them to do 125 of them, uh, and they'll be quite happy to have you join in uh, and group up with them in order to do that. That's obviously only an option in trade, uh, but it's one of two cases in this guide where there'll be a lot of options to group with other players to cut down on some of that, uh, on some of the grindiness. So next up is Encounters 4. So this is the one to use all of the Zana mods. Uh, firstly, you should do Fortune Favors the Brave first and just see this as a 90 Chaos Orb tax. Uh, and when I say 90 Chaos Orbs, this is 90 raw Chaos Orbs. So you can't use, uh, you can't use other currencies that have roughly equivalent trade value you need to have 90 pure Chaos Orbs. Uh, by the time that you're at the point that you're running these, though, 90 Chaos will be nothing much. Uh, now, this should give you a few a few credits towards all of the others. To speed up Metamorphs, you want to run Alexa Joris maps with Escaped Experiment allocated. Uh, to speed up Delirium Errors, run Turns End with That Which You Seek. To speed up Shrines, you want to use Sextants on your maps. There's a fairly common mo a Shrine mod. Actually, there's two fairly common Shrine mods. One of them adds a Gloom Shrine, one of them adds a Resonating Shrine. Uh, these will also, if they've been rolled with Awaken Sextants, they'll also add an additional Shrine on top of that. And of course, being Sextants, you get three uses of them. So if you're using Awaken Sextants, each time that you hit one of these Shrine mods, that's going to give you six Shrines towards this counter. For Rogue Exiles, uh, go Delving. There is no better way to get Rogue Exiles in big numbers than to go into the Delve Mines. Uh, and that will also help you with that Divination card, The Bones. For Abysses, you're going to want Sextants again. Uh, also, Abyss Scarabs drop a lot in uh, in Demolition Heist. Uh, you can also get more Abysses if you uh, allocate some of the passive points on the tree that favour Abysses. Uh, New Vestia has the one I quite like. Uh, not Votive Horde, but the, the precursor node to Votive Horde is really nice, uh, at least in my opinion. But uh, a lot of people prefer not to take these because they prefer to take other things in those regions instead of Abysses. Our next up is Gamble with Gwenon, which requires you to pick up a lot of specific unique items uh, from her. Now, 
Uh, there's one of the ways that I think that Gwenon works is that you choose the base and then Gwenon has a chance for that to become a specific unique that's based upon that base. Uh, but not all uniques are equal. Some uniques are much rarer than others. And I've done a little bit of discussion of this in other videos. I won't go through it again here. Uh, but for that reason, I'm going to suggest a few specific items that I think are the best, um, the best bases to go for. Uh, not saying that these are necessarily the only ones worth considering, uh, but this is to get a good chance of getting specific, um, to get specific uniques that are just really common. So you're going to be getting really common uniques, things like Surge Binders, the Dragon Scale Gloves, uh, which are cheap, but will do, it will be exactly what you need in order to get credit for this challenge. So firstly, you're going to get a magic item and a rare item. That'll happen without trying. For a body armor, if you have a low level character still, uh, grab simple robes, uh, you'll get a thousand ribbons fast. You might get a tabula rasa if you're lucky, uh, but you'll get a thousand ribbons fast. Uh, for a belt, go leather belts. Uh, there is obviously the chance of getting a jackpot with a headhunter. That's almost, uh, that's almost nil the chance of that happening, although it will happen for some people. Uh, there are heaps of common ones here though. Worms Malt uh, will come up. Immortal Flesh will come up a bit less than Worms Malt, but will still come up a bit. And there's also a couple of rarer ones that will still come up, like Pyroshock Clasp. So yeah, Leather Belt is the correct answer here. Uh, for boots, Stealth Boots, Chagrin Boots, and Dragon Scale Boots are high level boots that, so if you're a high level character, you will see a bias in Gwenon's inventory towards high, uh, high level requirement bases. Uh, so those are all high level boots that you'll be able to get that, uh, that you'll have a lot of, um, a lot of chances to take from her, uh, from her window and you'll have a reasonable chance of getting the uniques you're after. For gloves, dragon scale gloves are going for those surge binders because they're one of the most common uniques in the game. Uh, for helmet, you want silken hoods, sinner tricorns, lion pelts, mine cages, and nightmare bassinets. Uh, all of those have at least one pretty common outcome. Uh, and some of them, like Nightmare Bassinet, also has a rarer outcome as well. For Unique Jewels, Viridian Jewel has the best hits. You're going to run out of the currency that allows you to select jewels really quickly, so I suggest that you go with Viridian Jewels, because if you get really lucky, the best hits uh, will be a Viridian Jewel. I think it's pretty much the same chance, whichever flavour of jewel that you get to get the unique that you need for credit, uh, but... With, uh, if you do get lucky uh, on a Viridian Jewel, you can get an Unnatural Instinct. Uh, you can get a Intuitive Leap. These are jewels that you probably want for your build anyway. So, and even if you don't want them for your build, you can certainly sell them in trade. Uh, for rings, Sapphire Ring, Fire Cold Two Stones, and Unset Rings all have a pretty common outcome, uh, as well as having other outcomes as well. Uh, and for a weapon, Throat Stabber comes to mind. It's not the only choice, but it's the one that just jumps out to me. Uh, because wasp, Wasp's Nest is a very common unique. For Hagalith Tujin, uh, this will come through natural play and just taking a, a couple of bad deals along the way. So, for instance, converting very useful Tujin currency into complete waste of space Perandus coins. Uh, you will get this just through natural play, and I've got it uh, on my character without trying to so far. You want to do all Tujin encounters, which I suggest that you do anyway, because Tujin encounters are really profitable, uh, both for a trade league perspective where you're amassing things to trade to other players, uh, but also in Solo Self Found, where every time that you use an exotic coinage to reset his inventory, uh, there's a reasonable chance you'll get something that you genuinely want. You might need to do two or three Tujin logbooks to farm enough reroll currencies for this challenge, uh, but chances are you will loot those through natural play. Uh, Rerolls give better outcomes at higher character levels as well, and just keep that in mind. Uh, some of the items that you can get here won't show up until your character level is 68 or higher. Uh, one thing that's important to state about logbooks, uh, I should just mention this now, that the logbooks, each of the different options that you have for where you go in them. So when you um, when you show a logbook to Danig, uh, you'll be able to choose to, to take an expedition to one of two or three locations. Uh, when you take it to Danig to start them, uh, you'll be able to choose between the different uh, encounters and you should choose the ones that offer you either Danig's reroll currency or that offer you Tujin's reroll currency. So they'll be the ones that are generally best. Unless there's a challenge that's giving you a reason to go to one of the others, uh, that should be something you've got uh, that you keep in mind. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's a very important one. The ones that give Rog and Gwyn in currency, they're just they're of, of considerably less use. Of course, uh, you do need to at some point get the Rog Challenge and the Gwynnon Challenge, and so for that reason, you might want to burn a logbook 
that could have done a that could have done an encounter for Tujin, you might instead do Gwynin because you just need her currencies to beat a challenge. For broker deals with Rog, this got easier in 3.15.2. Uh, pre previously, I'd put this in the 24 challenge section. Now it might even be something that you get on your path to 12. Uh, that's because the changes to Rog reduce the frequency of duplicate offers, uh, which makes getting rarer offers more common. Uh, you should be able to do this with just a couple of logbooks. Uh, and that means never doing ROG in maps unless you really want to. Uh, ROG's not that bad to do in maps, but it's not like it's something that you feel you kind of uh, that you feel compelled to do. He's not like he's super great, uh, but you can yeah you can just probably get this challenge done with just two or three um, two or three ROG encounters in maps. Uh, sorry, in logbooks. Okay, so encounters five requires you to do four, maybe not boss encounters from previous leagues, but semi boss encounters, mini boss encounters. Uh, so firstly, you'll need to do a rare blighted map. Blighted maps drop a lot from blight encounters. If you're having a bit of trouble, you can scour your blighted map, then transmute it, then use a regal orb, and that'll make it rare. If you're having real trouble, uh, you can do that, but then you can annul both mods off it as well. So burn two annulment orbs, and you'll have a rare blighted map that actually has no mods on it. Uh, so it's basically a scoured map, except that it is rare for the purposes of this challenge. Uh, for the Vile Omnitect, you will need four Elver missions in order to complete a temple. Uh, and during this, you will need to successfully clear a path to the top. This is pretty intuitive. If you've never played around with Elva, just do her missions and you'll see, like, it will all make sense pretty quickly once you start doing them. You might fail your first one, but your second and third one, you'll probably be just, uh, you'll probably be just fine. Uh, if you're in trade, though, a tip I want to suggest is that you sell your spare portals. There is an endgame grind challenge. Uh, so that's one of the ones that people only go for if they're going for 40 challenges. And the people that are going for 40 challenges will absolutely love you if you're willing to sell them a portal to your Omnitech for 10 Chaos. Not only will they give you 10 Chaos Orbs, they'll also kill the Omnitech for you, and they'll probably one-shot it, uh, because these will be some of the most powerful characters in the league. Uh, those people will, that will really add up for you if you're able to sell three or four challenges, oh, sorry, portals each time you're doing a temple. Uh, what you want to do here, though, just to op optimize this, is to get to just outside the Omnitex room, then drop a town portal, then jump into Trade 820, which is where you'll meet these players, and uh, then just say, hey, selling endgame end game grind credit, Val Omnitech 10C, and then they will join you and they'll just come in and you'll be ready to do the fight straight away. Bestiary bosses are next. Uh, bestiary bosses take luck, but not a lot of it. While two of them are pretty rare, Feral and Fenimus, uh, the other two, uh, I think their names are Creation and Sakawal, uh, they're pretty common. 30 Einhar missions should do this on average, uh, and you might be, you might get it much faster than that. Beachhead is 20% chance when you use a Harbinger Orb on a map. Uh, that will upgrade a map into a Beachhead about 20% of the time, uh, so you just need to amass five Harbinger Orbs. Uh, this can be a little bit trickier this league uh, because you can't get as many Harbingers as you could last league, uh, but you will still get them. And if you're having trouble with this, uh, map in Veldo's Rest and allocate Diplomatic Escort and you will definitely get there. Okay, so next up we have eight mod maps. Uh, this is a straightforward but pretty dangerous grind. Uh, Reviling maps should be part of your natural mapping experience at endgame anyway, uh, so you're probably going to get this just through uh, standard play. But if you're in Trade League and you're coming up a bit short, like let's say you're at 15 out of 30 and you're thinking, oh, I really, I don't have enough maps to make to make another 15 8 mod maps that I can actually beat, that are all red tier maps as well, uh, you can group up for this. Uh, roll three maps yourself that are all 8 mod and then jump into Trade 820 and ask, hey, are there any 8 mod map rotors going? Uh, probably you'll be able to find a situation where there's three or four other players in the same situation as you and they're all happy to, you're all happy to group together blitz through the maps, and maybe there's a case where there's map mods you can't do. Maybe you can't do Elemental Reflect, but someone's playing one of these Forbidden Right Totem builds, and they can just come in and solo the boss anyway. Uh, so that'll be something that will definitely ma that will definitely make it much easier. In a group, all players get credit. Now, hardcore players, uh, maybe skip this one, and there's 28 challenges covered in this guide for a reason. Uh, I will fix that when I upload the, uh, when I upload the thing. Uh, there are 28 challenges covered in this guide for a reason. Hardcore players, don't try this one. Uh, eight mod maps are really rippy. Uh, Expedition Encounters 4 is next. Uh, this one is really straightforward and no tricks needed. It's only possible in logbooks, but it doesn't take very many of them, and nor does it take well-rolled ones. So this is where you need to acquire all of the different types of loot from them. So you'll need to unearth chests, which will have flags, 
the flags will tell you what the sort of loot is. So, you know, you'll need to get a Harbinger one. You'll need to get a Talisman one. You'll need to get a Ritual one. Uh, even though there's a lot of these to get, uh, I had this on my fourth logbook. Destroy Expedition Remnants is next. Uh, this one, very important point. You don't need to be able to beat all of the mods. Uh, I couldn't beat Lightning Immunity when I finished this challenge uh, at all. I was still on Absolution at the time. And I just uh, detonated a Monsters Are Immune to Lightning and got the credit for it anyway. I couldn't do it. I couldn't kill the monsters. I didn't need to. Uh, and then the Petrification mod needs to be said, this is legitimately rare. Take this one as soon as you see it. Uh, the others are all common or uncommon, but the Petrification mod comes up like, I've seen it twice, I think, in maybe 250 maps. Uh, so just keep that one in mind as something that you need to take when you see it. Unique Maps is next. Uh, this looks solo self found unfriendly, but Zana's missions fix that. Uh, so when you're running a Zana mission, she will offer a couple of maps, a couple of unique maps sometimes. Uh, and basically, this is a way that if you if you pick the rarest ones the first time you see them, uh, that will help you fill in all of these. So for instance, uh, I had Coward's Trial, which is one of the rarer of the unique maps. It's not one of the top tier rarity, but it's one of the rarer ones. And uh, I just had that show up when I was running a Zana mission. It was like, yep, cool. That saves me trading for that. Or if I was in Solar Cell found it, it saves me trying to farm one. Very important though, uh, if you're in a trade league, do not use an uber strict filter unless you're okay with trading for maps that you miss uh, as the NeverSync uber strict filter hides cheap unique maps. So just keep that one in mind. Uh, so Zana helps a lot here. And if you can get four points in Uncharted Realms, which might be beyond the scope of a player that's going for uh, 24 uh, challenges, but if you can get to four points in the Uncharted Realms by doing, say, the four-way Shaper fight, uh, Shaper Guardian fight and the four-way Elder Guardian fight, uh, then Zana's missions can be turbocharged this way uh, by taking, by allocating four points in Uncharted Realms to them. And this can, uh, and if you add in the very rare unique maps, uh, Parandus Manor and Doriani's Machinarium, they will be added into Zana's map pool. At least I believe they are. However, because you can skip three and still get credit here, you don't need to do Parandus Manor. You don't need to do Doriani's Machinarium. They just mean that you can that you can skip other maps instead. Unearth Expedition Areas comes up next, and I'm just adding this as an optional extra, as it might be most players' 28th or so challenge. It uh, requires doing a couple of dozen logbooks. If you really love logbooks, especially if you're trading for them, uh, then you will get this one through natural gameplay. Uh, this is where you find specific uh, hidden buried areas in maps. Uh, the reason that this is not straightforward, there is a buried area in most logbooks in my experience, like maybe maybe a bit more than 50%, but, but, this is important, you need to get all nine different ones of them, uh, and that's sort of one of those things where, like with Labyrinth Trials, uh, on average it takes 14.7 Lab Trials in order to get one of each of the six of them, uh, you'll find that there's something similar here. You need to get all nine of them, and that can be a little bit sketchy. That's all I got on this, though. Uh, Mega Valorbs have interesting results, and Pathway to 36, uh, which we'll also discuss 40, is coming. Uh, I will leave it there and have fun.